Every car needs to be refueled, whether it's a modern Marvel or an old Ford Model A like this one. At some point, every car needs a full tank of gas. And we, in our spiritual lives, are the same way. We too need to be filled up. So, when you're running on empty, spiritually, how do you fill up? There are many ways of doing this, but one of the easiest and most helpful ways is to spend time alone with God. No cell phones, no computers, no scheduling appointments or to-do list, just you and God. It can be early in the morning or late at night or on a beautiful day like today in a quiet place only you know about. Maybe it's a beautiful outdoor spot like this one or maybe it's a quiet place in your home. The when and where really doesn't matter. Find a way to spend time alone with God. He is waiting to refuel you and get your relationship with Him back on track. Have you ever faced a trial or a problem that seemed too hard to handle on your own? Well, I certainly have. In fact, I've faced problems that have made me give up. It has also made me feel like I'm not good enough. After giving up and failing over and over again, eventually I realized there's some things I just can't get through on my own. There's a great verse quoted in the book of Deuteronomy that says, Be strong and of good courage for the Lord your God he is with you. Remember, you're not alone. There have been others who have faced hard trials. There's a cool story in the Bible about two courageous and brave men who put their trust in the Lord even when everyone else was afraid and overwhelmed. In Numbers 13, the Lord tells Moses to spy on the land of Canaan, which was to be given to the people of Israel. Twelve of the spies returned with good news. They said the land was beautiful and it bared ripe fruit and flowed with milk and honey. However, the people there were strong and the cities were fortified. This discouraged the Israelites and they had no faith that they could win. See, the people were afraid because they forgot the trials and problems they went through they did not have to face on their own. They forgot that they didn't have to depend on their own success. And they forgot that God had been with them and had no intention of leaving them. Because of Caleb and Joshua's faith and courage from God, they were eventually able to take over the land of Canaan, just as God had promised. But many of the people who complained and gave up never made it. This story is a reminder that no matter how hard the situation may be, we can always have courage. Not because we're smart, strong, or maybe even lucky, but because we can put our trust in someone who never fails. Overeating, especially when working from home. That's me right there. <laughs> Hi, Amanda. Hi, Gia. So we are going to talk about overeating today. And Amanda, I know you've got a few tips because we're talking about it behind the scenes. <laughs> um, a few tips about what, what the challenges are that we're facing when it comes to overeating when you're yeah. working from home. Yeah. yeah, well, I've had many years working from home, which has been great with young kids, but also, as we're saying, a challenge in terms of having healthy meals and snacks and trying not to eat too much. So some of the main 
main challenges are, first of all, food is just so easily accessible and really tempting. It is. It's just there. The fridge, the pantry is right there. So easy to just grab something. The other thing is that when you work at home, you often don't have a set routine like you would at work. Yes. And so meal times are less um, scheduled, I guess, less structured. Um, and you just as eat well. as you go. That's right. And then it's also easier to eat because... I guess, for other reasons than being hungry as well. Yeah, so I think that one of the biggest challenges for people when they're working at home is snacking. I know this is a huge yes, one for me. me. I so love snacking. I wanted to talk about some tips around trying to have, you know, I guess better snacks. First of all, it's that accessibility factor. So trying to limit the amount of highly processed foods that you buy that are high in, you know, sugar, salts unhealthy fats. If you don't have it at home and it's not available, you're not going to eat it. I agree. So definitely. reduce the accessibility. The next thing is think about some healthy snacks that you, you'd like to have and um, I guess come up with a bit of a list so you know what to choose. You can also pre-prepare some snacks as well, which helps with portion sizes. Yeah, it also takes tip. the emotion out of eating as well. If you've already predetermined, say the day before, what you're going to have for a snack the next day. That's a really good tip. The other thing is that, you know, we've got kids and I've found this to be really useful for me personally is I make really healthy snacks for my kids. So make a bit extra for yourself as well. Eat yes. the same snacks as your kids. And you want to lead by example too because if right. you're doing it, then yeah. they're going to watch you do it and yeah. then they're going to grow up with those really good that's right. things, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so what about giving us some tips on a way to victory? Like what yeah. can we do to have victory over this? <laughs> Well, I guess first of all is set up a routine, have a routine, have three meals a day and a morning snack and an afternoon snack if you need it. So um, don't miss meals. It's when you get really hungry that you, that you tend to go yeah. and eat things that you shouldn't and you eat too much. So yeah, have a set routine. The other thing is take the time to prepare healthy meals for yourself. So have some fruit, some veg, some whole grains, some healthy proteins as well. It's actually easier to have healthy meals at home than when you're out at work absolutely from my perspective anyway yeah. you've got so many options you don't have to think about is this going to last when you're working away from home there's takeaway options as yes. well and they're generally less healthy than what you'd prepare at home and cost too. a lot of money too that's right <laughs> The other thing is just be mindful of why you're eating as well. Are you eating because you're hungry or is it because you're bored or stressed or anxious? So, or thirsty. Sometimes yeah, when I'm thirsty, thirsty, I just end up eating That's instead right. of drinking water. So just be thought, mindful, I guess, of why you're actually eating. And if it's not because you're hungry, then, you know, maybe you need to do something else, go for a walk or... Um, Absolutely. Yeah. They are very good tips. Routine. Be mindful of why you're eating. And what was the other one? There was another one in between there. Uh, prepare. Take time to take, prepare. Take time to prepare. Yeah. Those are three three tips for victory. <laughs> so thank you, Amanda. I really appreciate that. We'll see you guys next time. How do you feel when you think about your finances? Anxiety. Fear perplexity, or peace. Jesus taught us a life management principle that applies to all aspects of our existence, that everything comes with a cost, and it is wiser to be aware of the cost and plan in advance. He said, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? A young man was feeling very anxious about his upcoming wedding. He knew that the bride was the one he had dreamed of but he had some real concerns for their finances as a new couple. He would be the only one earning a salary, and previously, as a bachelor, he could hardly reach the next payday without borrowing some money. But to their surprise, after the first month, the first quarter, and even the first year of marriage, the one income they had was sufficient for their expenses. Somehow, they could even reach the next payday with a bit left over for savings. The result was great peace of mind. How was that possible? During their wedding preparation, the pastor counseling them reminded them about the instruction of Jesus to sit down and estimate the cost. So, they learned about the importance of a family budget, and while neither of them was an accountant, with practice, discipline, and God's help, they established a budget, a roadmap for their expenses. 
We live in a world where we are constantly urged to use our resources without thinking and planning. Commercials and viral advertising appeal to our senses, inviting us to base our spending on our impulses, triggered by what we see, hear, touch, smell, and taste. The result is an unhealthy spending pattern, leading to embarrassment, trouble, and pain. The master consultant, owner, and provider of all resources provides valuable financial principles in his word that if followed by faith in him, will help us avoid the pitfalls of unwise spending. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. This week, as you worship with your tithe and promise, decide to place God and his instructions at the forefront of your life. May we always put our desires last and God first. At the right time and with a solemn purpose, the Adventist movement was raised as a fulfillment of biblical prophecy to prepare the world for the second coming of Christ. Its divine mission is to proclaim the everlasting gospel to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, telling them to fear God and give glory to Him because the hour of His judgment has come. All who dwell on the earth should also be invited to worship God as the creator of heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. In Acts 1.8, Jesus indicates three geographic segments that must be reached by this missionary endeavor. Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Since the beginning, the church's pioneers understood that this enormous task could not be accomplished by one individual or by fragmented and disconnected church unities. They knew that the only way to achieve this objective was by emulating the apostolic church, being and working with one accord and having all things in common. So, to reach every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, they organized the remnant of the Advent Movement as the Seventh-day Adventist Church, where missionary strategies are decided not by one mind, but collectively through committees. Its members are elected by the whole body and all resources. The tithes and offerings are gathered in one place and distributed equitably following collective decisions and strategies according to the biblical storehouse principle. This unified effort is crucial to the accomplishment of this end time commission to illuminate the whole world with the everlasting gospel before Jesus comes. And how are our offerings distributed so that every nation, tribe, tongue, and people can be invited to fear God and worship Him as Creator? In 2002, the World Church suggested the Combined Offering Plan, which is already adopted by 12 administrative regions or world fields. While the destinations of offerings suggested by the givers are always respected, this offering plan proposes that all non-assigned offerings should be automatically distributed following the geographical missionary segments mentioned by Jesus in Acts 1-8. So, 50 to 60% of all non-assigned offerings stay at the local level, usually the local church. 20 to 30% of all non-assigned offerings are applied to regional mission, usually administered by the conference or mission and 20% of all non-assigned offerings are administered by the General Conference and applied to the World Mission. While following the Combined Offering Plan guidance, offerings are distributed to support all approved projects, initiatives, ministries, and regions of the world. On the other hand, assigned offerings that should ideally be given only in addition to the unassigned ones can only cover the assigned project or destination, leaving all the others uncovered. According to this distribution plan, church members are invited to worship God by regularly bringing Him their promise, which is their regular and systematic offering given after the tithe. Promise is a regular offering because it is given after every income or increase. It is systematic because it is given under a proportional system, a previously decided or vowed percentage of every income. Promise offering is given not just when there is a call or a need, but every time members recognize that they were blessed by the Lord with an income, they give as an act of worship and not as a donation, not to be blessed, but as a grateful response to the blessing. 
as important as it is, the tithe is a very restricted fund because it can be used only according to God's specific guidance in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. So tithe funds can only cover a limited part of the missionary's expenses. Offerings, on the other hand, are an unrestricted fund and can cover all kinds of missionary needs. This distribution system of offerings, resembling the tithe distribution system, is based on mutual submission and mutual trust. It will allow our missionary work to receive an uninterrupted flow of resources that will be regulated by God Himself as He keeps blessing His people financially. By giving promise, non-assigned regular and systematic offerings, or by distributing your offering according to the pattern suggested by the combined offering plan, you are providing the necessary leverage that will bring the everlasting gospel to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. I am the second grade teacher here in Ebai at Ebai SDA School. I teach all subjects for second grade. Ebai is a small island in the Pacific Ocean. It's part of a chain called the Marshall Islands. More than 15,000 people live on this small piece of land, and half of the population is under the age of 18. Ebai is very small very populated, lots of children running around. They are very friendly. They will tell you hi, yakwe, want to touch you, want to touch your hair, give you a hug. And then also there's not that many trees, not that many flowers, just a lot of buildings because, you know, such a high population. Ebai Seventh-day Adventist School plays an important role on the island. It educates children from preschool to grade 12. The school relies heavily on Adventist volunteers to function. Student missionaries especially come every year to fill the empty teaching positions. Elisa was a hairstylist in the United States, but she believed God wanted something else for her life. So she began praying for direction. Someone suggested that she consider volunteering her time for God's work. I had no idea where Ebai was, but it was there was an available opening, so I applied and I asked God to open the door if I was supposed to go or shut it if I was not supposed to. Since she arrived, Elisa has grown close to her students. They frequently hug her and want to spend time with her. The bond she's formed with the people on the island has motivated her to put her best effort into her job. But there have also been major challenges to living abroad. Since Ebai is an isolated island, getting fresh food here is infrequent, and healthy living can be difficult. So some of the struggles on Ebai have been getting sick and also not getting enough nutrition just because the food is very different here. There's not a lot of fresh produce. So my first sickness was chikungunya. It's a mosquito-borne virus. <laughs> and then I got a dislocated uh, kneecap um, from teaching the boys soccer. And so that was a struggle. I had to return to the U.S. When I had to return home from dislocating my kneecap, I, I was very angry. I felt guilty for leaving all my kids and my fellow missionaries. And I was angry at God. I blamed God for it. And I told all my family, I'm never coming back to Ebai. <laughs> and then I, I li drifted away from God a little bit. And then I prayed. I started praying. God, I need to come back to you. Tell me what to do with my life. I need my purpose. I need to know what it is. And as I prayed, God showed me that I was supposed to come back to Ebai because in the first place, who was the one that led me to Ebai? It was God. When Elisa's knee was better, she returned to Ebai for another year of teaching. She feels even more dedicated and closer to the students than before. What I like about being here is being able to provide that kind of support for the children and a nurturing experience for them. And most of all is Jesus Christ, you know, telling them about Jesus and his love and showing that love to them, not just telling them, but most importantly, you know, showing it in my own life to them. One of the biggest obstacles the school faces is maintenance. The salt concentration in the air is so high that everything deteriorates at a fast pace. 
something that would normally last 20 years in other parts of the world might only last three years in eBay. The staff and students are grateful for your contributions to the 13 Sabbath offerings. Yes, most definitely the money is needed for our school. There are many renovations that that are ongoing, you know, we constantly, with the salt water, it affects um, the building structure. And then also right now we have termites in the wood. So I think we're trying to turn the school into mostly, I think, concrete, so we don't have the termites. So yeah, there's a lot to do and things are, yeah, they're always falling apart just again with the weather, the salt water, and um, just a lot of kids, you know, maybe being hard on, on the school. Please consider how you can help the e by Seventh-day Adventist School in the Marshall Islands, as well as other schools throughout the North American Division. Education has a huge impact on future generations. Thank you for supporting the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Happy Sabbath Church. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Church of the Living God is now called to worship. Please stand. We will repeat together the affirmation of faith, which is taken from Titus 2, verses 11 to 14, and it is on the screen. For, for the grace of God and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity 
and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Let us pray. O God, our Father, we, your people, have gathered here today on your holy Sabbath day of rest to worship you, to glorify you because of who you are. Pour out your spirit upon us today. Accept our praise as we worship you. Be with us, I pray. Amen. Our hymn of praise will be hymn 518, Standing on the Promises. Hymn 518. Sabbath Church. Today's scripture reading will be taken from Genesis 6, verses. And they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the, da into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
and the Lord was sorry that he made that had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart here in the reading of God's holy word we come to you this morning in praise in honor in glory to your name because your name is above all other names there is none like you in all the earth so we say let your name be worshipped let your name be exalted and let your name be lifted up you are who you are the I am that I am Elohim and so we say father Thank you for being God. Thank you for being Savior. Thank you for being Deliverer. Thank you for being Defender. Thank you for being King. Thank you for being Picker Upper. Thank you for being our great Physician. Thank you for being our Good Shepherd. Thank you, Lord, for being everything and all things that we can ever desire because you made all things for yourself and for your glory and you have put everything on your feet let your name be praised God, for who you are and thank you for even forgiving our sins we are so thankful that you say when we forgive our sins that you are so faithful you are so just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness i am not worthy to stand in your presence this morning we are not worthy but we come with our sins. We come with our baggages. We come, oh Lord God, with our indifferences. We come with our lack of love. We come with our lack of compassion. We come, Lord God, with our gossiping. We come with everything that is not like you. And we place at the foot of your cross, knowing, Lord, that you are able to cleanse us, clean up the inner part of the hearts and make it worthy that when our mouths come out to you, that it can come up to a sweet incense. Thank you, Father. Father, we come to you for our children. 
We read in Daniel, Lord God, that, that when Daniel came before the king, that you had endowed him with all kinds of learning and all kinds of skills. Today, I bring Sharon children to you. The little ones, the babes, the credit rolls, the kindergarten, Lord God. The adventurers will have their investiture service this afternoon. And Father, I pray that as they continue to go through the end of the year, that the results for their exams, the results for their certification, the results for whatever they are doing so they can move to the next grade, the next level of their life, that you will put wisdom upon them. Open up their minds, open up their hearts, open up their, their intellect, Lord God, that you can teach them what, Lord God, you want them to know. Most importantly, Father, as the children's department, Lord God, is trying to build a new vision for our children, we pray that you'll give the leaders, Lord God, the strength, the patience. You'll give them the skills and the tact that as they continue to teach the children to serve you, that your children will come to love you so much that they will love you in spirit and in truth. Father, we have burdens. And you said there's a book. The song says, burdens are lifted at Calvary because Jesus is always there. And so because we know that we have burdens, we, each person in this church has a burden. We have burdens for our children, burdens for our health, burdens, Lord God, for our families, burdens for our siblings, burdens, Lord God. But they are lifted at Calvary because Jesus is always there. And so we say thank you. Thank you for taking our burdens. I bring to you this morning, Joan, Lord God who is Fernand's sister, who is in the ICU right now, and it is not looking so well, but we know that what you have the last word. It's not finished until God said it's over. And so we are fighting till the victory is won. And so this afternoon, Lord God, this morning, we are calling you to come and zero down into that ICU, Lord God. Touch Joan, Lord God. Touch her. Just like you did for that hoop, that little girl which is 12 years old. Touch her and do something different for her today that the doctors will turn the tides around. The nurses will come and say, oh, something has been happening. What is happening here? Let them be mesmerized But what you can do because we know that you are the all-powerful God who can do all things. And you say, the prayer of the faithful will heal the sick. And in the name of Jesus, we say to you, thank you for joining Thank you for all the Johns who are sick. Thank you for all your children because we know that you have the last say. Let your name be exalted. We bring to you, Lord God, the evangelist, our evangelist, Bolo. We ask that you will endow him, Lord God, with mercies. Endow him, Lord God, with wisdom from on high. Like you did for David, Lord God. You can, Daniel, you're going to do it for him. Because when he opened his mouth to speak today and through all the evangelistic meeting, like hearts will come and beg you to take them because they know that, Lord God, without you, they can do nothing. But with you, all things are possible. Thank you for the souls that will come to know you. Lord God, thank you for the words that will go forth. Thank you for those who are working behind the scenes, Lord God, that it all will work because we know that you are the one that goes before us. Fight the enemies and fight every obstacles and give us the peace. Thank you for the peace that you'll give us. Thank you for the joy in our souls. Thank you for being God and thank you for being Savior. And thank you for taking care of our children and for our seniors. And thank you for the sick that you'll heal. And thank you, Lord God, for the homes that you'll give. And thank you, Lord God, for the husband and wife that will give our young children. And thank you for the new positions that our children will be applying for as they graduate from college. Thank you for the certification exams that will be passed. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your children here, Lord God. And thank you for the opportunity to thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
God's story, Acts. So part of God's story is a book in the Bible called Acts. It's about what happened after Jesus died and came back to life. And it goes like this. Just before Jesus went up to heaven, he told his followers they were going to receive power because he was going to be sending them the Holy Spirit. The disciples didn't understand what that meant at first. But then the Holy Spirit came down to the disciples on a holiday called Pentecost, which is when the early church began. You see, Jesus had also said the disciples would tell the stories about Jesus in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, but also that they would go to the ends of the earth. That would have been impossible for the disciples to do on their own. They needed the Holy Spirit to work through them. The Holy Spirit worked through the disciples as they taught about God's kingdom, shared their food and money with one another, and helped the poor and sick which were exactly the kind of things Jesus had shown them. Because they were helping people and telling everyone they had met about Jesus, more and more people decided to become followers of Jesus. These early followers yeah. of Jesus were called followers of the way or Christians. Things went well for the early church for a while. But the same religious experts and powerful rulers who arrested Jesus also tried to stop the early church from growing. They didn't like what the disciples were teaching about Jesus that Jesus was the true Lord and King of the universe. And in Jesus' kingdom, it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, man or woman, slave or free, from one country or another. Everyone is welcome and everyone is equally loved by God. Soon, things got dangerous. After a man named Stephen was put to death for following Jesus, the early church split up and went into hiding. Some people went to Judea and Samaria, and others went as far as they could possibly go. It was exactly what Jesus said would happen, but it happened in unexpected ways. Like when a Jewish follower of Jesus named Peter had a vision of all kinds of animals and food on a blanket coming down from heaven. Even though Jewish law said not to eat certain things, God told Peter he could eat anything he wanted with whoever he wanted. The Holy Spirit wanted us to know the good news of Jesus was for everyone. No matter who you are, where you live, the color of your skin, or what food you like. Or when Paul, another Jewish man, saw Jesus with his own eyes. Huh? Jesus told him that God had chosen Paul to spread the message of Jesus to the Gentiles, which meant anyone who wasn't Jewish. Paul would go on at least three huge trips to different countries, spending the rest of his life talking about Jesus with everyone he met including religious experts and powerful rulers. Peter and Paul are just two of the people who played a big role in the early church. Their stories are a big deal because they show us what it looked like for Jesus' kingdom to spread into all kinds of different places and cultures. Paul wrote a bunch of letters to small churches all around the world, and some of those letters are part of the Bible we have today. There were also brave, caring women like Lydia and Priscilla, who were important leaders and teachers. The book of Acts is about all sorts of people who seem very different but had one thing in common. They follow Jesus. Anyone who is a Christian has something else in common too. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helped the people in the early church. And the Holy Spirit still helps people who follow Jesus today. Whenever people hear the story of Jesus for the first time, whenever people choose to follow Jesus and join a church community, whenever God gives people special abilities, knowledge, or courage that helps them be more like Jesus, that reminds us of what the Holy Spirit has always done, going all the way back to the early church. And that's a little bit about the story of Acts. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God sent Jesus' disciples the Holy Spirit. The early church started growing. Some people tried to stop the early church. Christians had to hide. Peter had a vision. Paul spread the good news. Lydia and Priscilla were leaders. The Holy Spirit still helps people today. And that's a part of God's story. Happy Sabbath to everyone at home around the world. John 3, 16. First John 3, 16. This is how we know what love is. Christ Jesus said, sat down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. We worship God with all our resource because of his sacrifice love. 
He left heaven and offered it all, his own life, as God love, as God representative, a sacrificial spirit, it's part of our true destiny, identity, sorry. John Andrews demonstrated such spirit when he went to Europe as an Adventist missionary. He worked in Europe oftentimes using his own money to purchase tracts, pamphlets, and other materials. One year after arriving in Europe, his daughter died of tuberculosis. Heartbroken, John Andrew nevertheless continue his mission. He did so until he died at age 54. We are alive, <clears throat> we are living in a time now when the money and other resources are sometimes hard to find. However, those who profess to be of Christian household yet indulge the selfish desire for which in, in an expensive clothing, furniture, food, etc. are Christian only in name. To be a Christian is to be like Christ. And to be like Christ is caring for others. This week we may offer tithe and regular offering reflect a spiritual of self-denial, the spirit of Christ. Will the deacon and deaconess come forward?
entered into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, however, said the Lord of hosts, if I will open the window of heaven and pour upon you, it shall not be room enough to receive it. Praise God. We are praying now. Lord, we praise you for consenting to make the greatest of all sacrifices to save us. Help us demonstrate the same sacrificial spirit in our daily living, including how we use our resource. Amen. church uh, the opportunity is given to me today to introduce our speaker now for some of us um, the speaker I'm about to introduce you have you have heard him preach last week and maybe a few times now so you might be wondering why am I introducing the same speaker every Sabbath why everyone comes up here and introduces the same speaker every Sabbath when it was brought to my attention that we should be introducing our pastor every Sabbath I was wondering, why am I supposed to introduce this pastor every Sabbath? But I thought about it, and later it dawned on me that our pastor has a vision. He's a visionary person. He, he's not hoping that he's only going to preach to the same people every Sabbath. His vision is every Sabbath there will be 20 or 30 new persons in the pews and also online. And these are people that don't know him. So he has to be introduced every Sabbath. Can I get an amen? So the speaker I'm about to introduce, you know him. Some of us, some of us don't know him. And let me tell you a little thing about him. The church we are in today, he envisioned that church before we even purchased that church. He prayed for us to be in that church before we even put a dollar towards that church. So he's a praying man. Well, he is a husband of one wife. I just want to make that clear. He, got, he also has four children. We want to keep him in prayer because he got a vision for our church. Our speaker, after our music, after our praise team, will be none other than Pastor James Bolo. You know, Pastor Bolo is a little like me. Pastor Bolo got a, a, a resume that's longer than the church. But you see, Pastor Bolo only want to tell you he's the man of God. He only wants that to be said about him. He's a man of God. He's a praying man. So keep on praying for the minister after our praise team with Pastor Bolo. Thank you. Amen, amen. Happy Sabbath again, Sharon Church. Happy Sabbath again, Sharon Church. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Isn't it good that we have a day where we can just rest, that we can come and glorify the God that was with us Monday through Friday? I'm sorry, he wasn't with y'all? Monday through Friday, including the Saturday that we're here right now, he's sitting amongst us. So we ought to give him glory, we ought to give him the praise, and that's what we're going to do. So I just need a few people who want to help me praise God in this place, to just worship in this place. Amen? Let's clap.
give him he deserves all the glory all the honor is all for him it's all for him who believes that i don't see anybody who believes that who believes that only on the back there we go but he deserves our worship so we're going to sing this song and it says my hallelujah belongs to you We say, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh God, my hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah, say, my hallelujah belongs to you. Now I need to hear a church sing this part. You deserve it. You deserve it. Right there, stay right there. You deserve it. You deserve it. Say my hallelujah.
Lord, hear us now. My hallelujah belongs to you. Somebody make it personal. Sing it to yourself. Sing to your God. Hey. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Somebody sing that with me, say oh. Somebody say oh. Cry out to your God, say oh. And I have nothing else to say, all I say is oh. deserves our praise. He deserves every clap. He deserves every hallelujah, every shout, every tear. He deserves every word because he walks with us in the valley of the shadow of death that says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, it follows me everywhere I go. So why not give you all of what you deserve? Why not give you all of my worship? Why not give you all of my praise? Because you've never left me alone. God has never left you alone. Amen. God has never left you alone, and he never will. But we serve a God that will never leave you alone. Amen. Amen. Everybody sing this song. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The song says, he goes before me. He's a defender behind me. Defender behind me. I won't fear. I won't fear. Say, I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. My cup is overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. Because I will not fear. I won't fear. Lift up. Shout right there. Say, I am not alone. Why, God? Because you are my comfort. He's my comfort. Always holds me close. Always holds me close. Amen. Amen. He always guides me. He always guides me. Through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing, say His joy is refreshing, Lord, it restores, restores my soul. And this is what I love, it says, mercy and goodness. Mercy.
Lord a hand of praise wherever you are. Stand on your feet. Give the Lord a hand of praise. You're praising the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's my shepherd. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Do you believe that you are not alone? Come on, tell somebody, say, I'm not alone. Tell somebody, say, I'm not alone. Come on now. He is my shepherd. What do you say to that? Come on, put the hands together one more time. Give the Lord a hand of praise. He's not alone. I'm not alone. Because he's my shepherd. Are you there with me? So we give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. What do you say to that? We want to thank the praise team. Amen. Come on, we want to thank the praise team, our musicians. What do you say to that? Oh, God is awesome. God is awesome. What do you say to that? John 3, verse 16. When you get there with a preacher, say amen. John 3, verse 16. The Bible says, are you there with a preacher? John 3, verse 16. Let's put that on the screen. John 3, verse 16. When you get there with a preacher, say amen. For God so loved the world. Are you there with a the preacher? You want to help the preacher read that? For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have what? Everlasting life. What do you say to that? Someone give the Lord a hand of praise for that. God loves the world so much. Love us so much. John 14. John 14, 1 and 3 say, let not, come on, help the preacher now, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house, and many mentions, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that where I am, Jesus said, that where I am, there ye may be also. God is amazing. What do we say for that? God is truly amazing. We want to praise God for his kindness. We want to thank God for his grace. Before we get into the message, I want to say it is evangelism time. What time did I say? It is evangelism time. That means that we need to put on our evangelistic shoes. We need to make it our business, our responsibility for those that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. What do we say to that? This world, as it is now, this world has gone mad. What do you think? This world has gone mad. I'm not saying it is going mad. I'm saying it has gone mad. So we need to warn the world. We need to tell them we are the watchmen. We need to tell them that soon and very soon, soon and very soon, we will be seeing the king. What do you say to that? It is evangelism time. Our evangelistic series starts July 9th. When did I say? July 9th, so you want to write that down, you want to mark that on your calendar, July 9th, our, event, our evangelistic series starts and it ends at the end of July. And we, our goal, our goal this year for Sharon Church is to add 50 more or more to the, to the body of Christ. What do you say to that? I, I'm going to hear an amen from this side. Our goal this year is to add... 50 or plus more to the body of Christ. What do you say to that? So we want to, we want to, we want to challenge you by the grace of God. All of us are the tools in God's hand. What do you say to that? Are we tired with this world? Are we tired with this world? But it seems that some of you are very comfortable down here. Are you not tired with loneliness? Credit check, come on, talk to me. Immigration papers, come on, talk to me. Are we not tired with this world with racial segregation? Are you not tired of this world? 
Uh, we have a job to do. What do you say to that? We want to tell as many people that there is a kingdom that is coming. Christ is coming to take his people home. Amen? And we want the world to know. So we have a job to do. It starts July 9. Now think about it. If each and every one of us here were to bring just one person, our personal ministry department is asking you for two. But for this evangelistic meeting, from now to July, we are at, we've been saying this since January, we are asking you for one. Is that too hard? Come on, you're quiet on the preacher. Is that too hard? You know, if there was a sale going on at Macy's or BJ's, come on, talk to me. Costco, come on, talk to me. Uh, 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 have mercy. Walmart, come on, talk to me. Huh? Some kind of bargain online from Wayfair or Amazon, come on, talk to me. Somebody will call somebody and tell them that there is a sale. In fact, the sale is 80% off. Ouch. And then if you use your coupon, you got another 30% off out somebody. Huh? <laughs> we would tell somebody. But I've heard the joyful sound. <laughs> Are you there with me? We, we need to tell somebody it is free. <laughs> it has been, in fact, you don't need to get a coupon. It has been paid for. Are you listening to the preacher? Tell somebody it has been paid for. That's why we, we need to just tell somebody. You don't need to worry about the details. Just tell them and invite them. Encourage them. Make sure on that opening night, the night of the ninth, you want them to be here. In fact, the Friday, the Friday before the Friday of the ninth, we are having a concert here. Our, our, our musical department, they are working on a concert. Amen. In fact, we are playing a health fair before that weekend. We are working on several things. So we want you, all of us, all of us, to be a part of this thing. You know, all of us are the Bible workers for this church. Are, are you there with a the preacher? Mm. Ouch. I want to take this time before I preach. I want to take this time to thank those that came to work last Sunday. Put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them. You were dedicated. You dedicated. You came. You work. You cook for us. We enjoy it. We work and we did some beautiful job. Tomorrow morning we want to come at 9 a.m. and finish up what we started. Our evangelistic meeting is going to be done right across from the church in our parking lot. By the school building. Amen. And we are cleaning up. We need to do some finishing job. We are asking all of us to come tomorrow morning. Yes, there will be food, but we need you. If you say, Pastor, I have a back ache. Come on, talk to me. I understand that. Pastor, my knees aching. Uh, Pastor, I can work. Uh, you can talk. Come. You know, in the workforce, there are some people that are there to talk. Come on, talk to me. And there are other people that are there to sing. Are you there with me? They all make the workforce. We're going to be here encouraging people. By the way, we will be giving flyers. So in that way, if you can work, you can be doing another work. You can be handing flyers. You will be, you will be amazed to know that by the church, there are so many people that just passed by the church. They don't know what's going on in here since COVID. We want to tell them that we are having a great time in the Lord. Is that okay? If you have an hour, come and give it. You have 30 minutes, come and give it. Just come. Tomorrow for 9 a.m., just come, please. Give us a little time. And then we will finish this thing quickly um, and get ready for our series. Is that all right? Let me see the hands of some of you that will be here, all of us that will be here tomorrow morning. You're saying by God's grace. Let me see the hand. Don't be afraid. You're saying by God's grace, I want to come. Bring the kiss. Bring the kiss. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. I got to stop making some phone calls. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. We want to welcome those of you that are watching from online, from wherever you're watching from.
from around the world, from the Caribbean, from, from Asia, from Europe, from Africa, wherever you're watching from, we want to say from the Middle East, wherever you're watching from, we want to say you're welcome. We pray you enjoy this message. We pray that you are blessed in the Lord. What do you say to that? We pray that you experience the, the goodness of God. For those of you we have not seen for a few Sabbaths, we want to say you're welcome. We are glad you are in church today. We want to say you're welcome. We miss you all. Yes, it's a clock. It's good to see you. We miss it. It's good to see, see all of you that we've not seen for the past couple of Sabbaths. We are glad you are here. Amen? Today we want to speak to us on the theme, a better world. A better world. Turn to someone, tell them a better world. Let us pray. Oh, to Jesus. I surrender. All oh, to him. I freely gave. Today we will trust you. We will believe the plans you have for us. And when time is no more, you will save us in your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. I said to myself, as I'm working on this sermon, I asked myself, why is there a need for a better world? Why is there a need? It seems like some of us are very comfortable to where we are at. Hello, somebody. It seems that some of us are enjoying our neighborhoods. Come on, talk to me. few days ago, I started getting several texts, and the text messages started coming in. Pastor Bolo, how are you doing? How's the family? Are you okay? Uh, is everyone okay? And the text just kept on pulling in, and I'm, and I'm reading the text. We heard about shooting in your area, you know, the, because we live in Buffalo uh, for a while, and some people still think we are in Buffalo. So they kept saying in text, uh, concern, and, 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 and just trying to know, Pastor, we are praying for you, voicemail, trying to say, Pastor, we are praying for you. You know what happened in Buffalo a few days ago. A young man driven by racial passion and racist behavior came, surveyed the area, spoke to people the day before. In fact, one of the persons he spoke to, I did some connecting and I connected to the person he spoke to the day before. Scout of the area. And the next day he came and did his thing. And he had been there before then. You, you read the report. Why is there a need for a better world? In fact, when you, when you look at the news, when you read on the internet, when you talk to people, there are countries that promise or, or tell us that they have paradise on earth. Are, are you there with me? You know, when you take some of these vacations, hello somebody, for a week, if you have two, it's, it's awesome. But for a week, you go out and, and, and you are tempted not to want to come back. Hello somebody. And especially if it's all inclusive. Uh, you're not listening to the preacher. You know, I want to do an all inclusive wedding package function in one of these countries. You know, they, 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 they flew the preacher in to go and do the wedding. And so we went to this place and, and I got there to do the wedding. When I walk in, they had a car waiting for me into the airport. Come and talk to me. Drove me into the resort. Are you there with me? They said to me, you can eat whatever you want to eat, drink whatever you want to drink, drink, and you can swim in the pool, whatever you want. You just, just do whatever you want for a moment. For a moment, come on, talk to me, somebody. 
I, I, I said you can actually live on planet earth and enjoy peace. Hello, somebody. And then after three days, <laughs> hello, somebody. <laughs> I had to get back on the plane to get down here. Are you there with me? Then I said, oh, my goodness. There are places on vacations in, this, in the Bahamas, in the Caribbean uh, islands. You go to Europe, Africa. And in Asia and so forth, they all promise, they have places, they tell you, you get here, you will have peace and joy. But the problem, they don't tell you that it's just for a temporary, it's a temporary peace and joy. For a few days or for a week, in fact, while you're there, if you pay your money long before time, you really don't feel it. But if you just have to pay, <laughs> hello somebody. You're enjoying those nice mangoes. Come on, talk to me. Enjoy your nice salad and 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 and, and, and escovish fish. Are you there with me? I, I, I enjoy your nice juice and everything else. And then you can swim with the fish. Come on, talk to me. You can do it. And it seems like you just don't want to leave planet Earth. But after you leave from there. Friends of mine, when we see what's happening before our very eyes on national television, we have to say to ourselves, it's time to go home. When you see what's happening around you in our neighborhoods, come on, talk to me. When churches are no longer safe, a safe place. Are you there with me? When, when, when you go to the mall or to a shopping center and you have to keep looking as to who's behind you, come on, talk to me. There was a time you could have gone in, parked your car, or taken the bus or the train, and you went good, happy. Come on, talk to me. But now and then, every now and then, you have to look as to who's watching, who's behind you. Are you there with a preacher? This world, and then on the news you see war. The most recent one is the Ukraine and the Russian war. And while that war is going on, there is war within the war. Come on, talk to me. Because within the war, that there is Ukraine and the Russian, there's also racial injustice within the war. Are you listening to the preacher? Turn the news, South Africa flooding. Come on, talk to me. Home's gone. Democratic Republic of Congo still fighting wars. Come on, talk to me. Are you there with the preacher? The Middle East, you go in that injustice to women. Are you there with me? It seems like there is no end in sight. And every time you catch a little break, you think things are getting better. Then you hear of another thing that's about to happen. In other words, this earth is messed up. Are you quiet on the preacher? Uh, yes, you can get your nice car, your nice home, but, but, and you want to put all the cameras you want to put. Come on, talk to me. People are not even afraid of cameras anymore. You know, there was a time they saw ADT on your lawn. They said, you know, we'll back off. That's the world we live in. The world we live in has gone mad. What do you say to that? Amidst all of that, we have food shortage. The prices of food going up. Hello, somebody. The ones you used to pay $3 for, come on, talk to me. They are now how, many, how much? 
$6 now. The one you used to pay one ninety nine ninety nine cents for now. There is no more 99 cents store anymore. Hello, somebody. It's dollar 25 cents. Plus tax. And then the quantity is reduced. Are you there with a the preacher? The bag of rice I used to buy for $11. Somebody say, ouch. You got to help the preacher now. Because some of us have to eat rice. Come on, talk to me. Hello, somebody. <laughs> At the gym, this used to be $11. I went to the store. It is $17 now. Somebody said, ouch. And the very first time I saw it, I said, you know, I'm going to give it a week. <laughs> I left it for a week. It's some other things, but you see, I got to eat rice. Come on, talk to me. <laughs> And then after a week, I went back. It's eleven dollars and sixty nine cents. Come on, talk to me. It's no seventeen dollars sixty nine cents. The price keeps going up. It's not coming down. I said, preacher, if you need some rest, you gotta pay this thing. Close your eyes. Are you listening to the preacher? So I tell you about the price of gas. Hello, somebody. All of the places you used to find cheaper gas is no longer cheap. Hello, somebody. And then if you have your home that has to be heated with diesel oil. Mm, I used to pay... Lord have mercy. Someone got to pray for the preacher. I used to pay at least six. We used to pay at least six to seven hundred dollars to fill our tent. Maybe around seven hundred dollars to fill our tent. But now, and at that time, the oil was two dollars and fifty cents. When it got higher, it was about three dollars. But the last time I went to the pond, the oil price is $7. Hello? <laughs> you know, some of us cannot do with our hot water. Come on, talk to me. Somebody say, ouch. <laughs> This earth is messed up. <laughs> Man in their own business. We're just going to go and shop. I called my family in Buffalo to find out from them and I was talking to one of them and she just broke and started crying. She said, Pastor, you know that is the very shop, the very shop uh, 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 on tops that we go to and shop. That is where my, my, my boys, my son will go. That is where my grandchildren will go. My grandchild is always, and, and Pastor, you know that. And she began to cry. She said, Pastor, I, 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 I had COVID. That is the reason I was not there, but I would have been among those that were killed. Are you listening to the preacher? As she, to, as she began to speak, I, I began to think because that is the same tops in Buffalo. Just opposite the top that I did my first evangelistic meeting in Buffalo. The same tops that God performed a miracle uh, 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 by the means of a key. Oh, you're not listening to the preacher. Maybe I'll tell you that story another time for one of a different sermon. But, but God allowed me to open a car with my house key. You're not listening to the preacher. Somebody said they want to hear the story. You want me to tell the story? Of the sermon topic, come on, you want me to tell the story? 
We are getting ready for an evangelistic meeting like this one. I got my first elder. We went to the top. We've been going around distributing flyers and talking to people that Christ is coming. Telling them that God is able. That God is a way maker. We came to the top. Took a letter. Asking them for water and some refreshment for our tent project. And as we gave them the letter, they agreed. While we're coming out, I see a lady and a gentleman in the parking lot caught, cursing the storm out of their car. That's the neighbor who I'm talking about. And as they're cursing the storm of their car, I walked to them. I said, excuse me, can I help you? And she looked at me and used the F word and said, you think, what do you think? I said, well, I can help. She said, we've called the police. The police said they don't unlock cars anymore. Where am I going to get 100 plus dollars to open this car? And I smiled. I said to her, that is your problem? She said, yes. I said, but that's a simple problem. She said, what do you mean by that? I said, I can open the car. She said, can you open the car? I said, yes. I said, but you got to make a promise. She said, what's the promise? I said, you see the tin right across the road from the top right here? She said, yes. I said, we're about to have an evangelistic meeting. We're about to talk about the God that is able. And what I want you to do is to make a promise. When I open this car, you will show up to the meeting. She said, if that is the requirement, then go ahead. I'll come. Are you there with me? Then I turned to my elder standing by me. I said to him, elder, take one of your keys and, and open the car. Are you listening to the preacher? You see, God is the move mover. <laughs> the elder took, he took his key. He took his pastor in there. I said, any key. He took it, put it in the door and click and the door opened. Are you listening to me? That's the God we're about to talk about. That's the God that people need to know. The God that is a way maker. The God that is a miracle worker. He is saying that this earth is messed up. I got a different plan for those that love me. Are you there with a preacher? Because you are a believer, there are two texts in the Bible that I want you to always remember. There are two texts. My kids know when we are having worship, if it's lit, and I can't get everyone to recite their memory verse, they know which text we're all going to recite together. The first one is what? Come on, come on, what is it? John 3, 16. Are you there with a the preacher? If you can recite your memory verses I, I, because it's lit, I tell them this one we must know because it goes like this. For God so loved the world. You know, every now and then when you see trouble at the very end in your home, on your job, with the family, with the kids, with money, with everything else, you want to know if God still loves you. <laughs> if God still cares. John 3, 16, Nicodemus came and Jesus, after Jesus did everything, Jesus began to expand to the disciples. The Bible says it's written in red, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Are you there with me? The love that God has for, for this world, our friends of mine, I want you to understand, cannot be explained. Love is not what we say. Are you listening to the preacher? Let me ask you a question today. Do you love the Lord? Are you quiet on the preacher? Do you love the Lord? You see, love is not what we explain or say. Love cannot be explained. That's why love is a verb. It's an action word. Are you there with me? Love is what we do. Because I love the Lord. If he tells me 10 left, I will 10 left. Come on, talk to me. 
Because I love the Lord, I don't understand, but he just told me, turn right, I will turn right. You see, when we love God, the love of God will drive us to do things that we don't understand sometimes. The love of God will constrain us to love people that are not lovable. Are you there with a preacher? The love of God will force us to forgive those that have mistreated us. The love of God will tell us to have mercy on those that don't deserve mercy. Are you listening to the preacher? For God so loved the world. Are you there with me? That he gave his only begotten son. In order for God to demonstrate his love, he gave his very life. Think about it. It took the very life of God. The only begotten of the father. That whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Are you there with me? Jesus you see, friends of mine, I want you to understand that it's the love of God that drives, that drove God to come down to planet earth. It's the love of God. The Bible says that God commanded himself to love us so that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Are you there with me? You see, it's, it was the love of God that brought compassion in the heart of Jesus when he stood at the grave of Lazarus. That evening when he saw Mary and Martha on the way, it was the love of God that drove him and brought tears from his eyes. When he said to Martha, your brother, your only brother, shall live again. Are you listening to the preacher? Friends of mine, think about it. It was the love of God. If God could have wept over a, a one person that died, think about millions, or think about thousands and millions, those that have died over the ages, don't you think that it hurts the heart of God? Think about it. The next time someone asks you, how could a loving God allow such a thing to happen? Tell them, God has constrained himself. Are you there with me? Are you there with a the preacher? Every believer should know this text by heart. For God so loved the world. Think for a moment with me. When he sees his creation and how men have turned against one another. Lives lost to senseless war. Greed-stricken men have, 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 have killed and suppressed others for their own good. Are you there with me? Men have turned against one another. Think about it. God's heart is broken. Are you there with me? You see, it must grieve the heart of God to see the state of this earth as it is now. But the Bible says, as we are coming to the end of time, all these things will happen. I know every now and then we are surprised. But if you're a believer, don't be surprised. The Bible already said these things will happen. Are you there with me? He said, I know your hurt. He said, it is hard. It is depressing sometimes. He said, but hold on. Are you there with me? He said, hold on. I have a better plan. Are you there with me? He said, I know what you're going through on planet Earth. I know the struggle. I know what your grief. I know your desire. But just hold on. Are you there with me? I, I must make all things new one day. Are you there with me? He said, hold on. I will create a new heaven and a new earth where there will be peace and joy forever. Hallelujah, somebody. He said, this earth is so messed up. But I want you to know that I love this world so much. I love you so much that I came down to demonstrate the level, the degree of my love. I will not withhold anything for your sake. The second text is John 14. Because Jesus is seeing the chaos on this earth. Are we not tired? Come on, you're quiet on the preacher. Are we not tired?
Sometimes, some days it seems like you've taken one step ahead and six steps back. Come on, talk to me. Are we not tired? Are we not tired with the housing situation on planet Earth? Are we not tired? Are we not tired with the injustice on planet Earth? Are we not tired? Some of us can only live in certain neighborhoods. Are we not tired? Are we not tired because we are judged not by what we know, but we are judged because of how we look? Come and talk to me. Are, you, are we not tired? But Jesus said, I got another text for you. He said, in this world, there will be trials and tribulations. But I have another text. He said, in John 14, 1, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Every now and then when trouble comes my way, he said, James Baller, hold on. I'm still the master in the storm. Just hold on. Let not your heart be troubled. While problems are coming on planet Earth, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And if I go, son of mine, I want to understand I'll come again and receive you unto myself. The way I am, Curtis, the way I am, there you may be also. He says, son, I want you to understand you go to bed sometimes and, and you're lying on your bed not knowing what to do but let not your hearts be troubled in fact I know they don't want you to live in certain neighborhood they say your credit is not okay they say you're not qualified but I went I've gone to prepare a mansion for you hallelujah somebody I'm gonna have a place on planet earth but I have a home in glory land and I sound the sun now you never know I mean? be one day the key and it turned to me son I have a key with your name written on it my daughter come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world hallelujah let not your heart be troubled Janelle let not ye believe in God You see, when you serve God, you got to know this thing. When you serve God, when you serve God, you got to remember these two texts. Are you there with a preacher? Huh? Because friends of mine, soon and very soon, we'll be done with the troubles of this world. God said, I have a better plan. Are you there with me? <laughs> if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go <laughs> and prepare a place for you, Sister Bear, I'll come again <laughs> and receive you unto my server. Uh, do you want to be to where God is? Are you there with me? <laughs> Do you want to see him face to face? Oh, how I love to see him and look upon his face. Are you there with me? You see, you see, you see, one of these days I'm going to lay down my burdens down by the riverside. One of these days I'm going to study war no more. You see, this earth is so messed up that I'm looking for a city far beyond the sky. I know the master architect. His name is Jesus. Come and talk to me, somebody. Friends of mine, I want you to understand, Jesus said, Lord, he said, I want you to understand, this earth is so messed up that while I was going to prepare a place for you, I put some things in place. Now somebody should be on their feet praising God. He said, the new city... We, know, we need no, we will have no need for a seeing facility. Come and talk to me. He said the new city, we have no need for an assistant living. Come and talk to me. The new city, we have no need for a hospital. Come and talk to me. The new city, we have no need for a sack war. Are you there with me? The new city, we have no need for a painkiller because our Jesus will be there. The new, in fact, he said, John said, when I saw the new city, the new Jerusalem, I saw the master architect, Jesus himself. 
Friends of mine, this is how Isaiah put it. Isaiah say that on that day, we will say, Lord, our God. Isaiah 25 verse 9, he said on that day, when we look in the cloud, uh, can you sing right on King Jesus? No man can hinder thee. The king is coming. He said on that day, we will look and say, Lord, Lord God, we have waited for him and he has come to save us. Are you done with me? Isaiah uh, verse 10 said, on that day, it will be heard from the mouth of the creator himself. Awake. You're not listening to the preacher. All of those that died because of COVID. All of those that died from diabetic coma. All of those that died because of high blood pressure. Are you there with me? All of those that died from violence. All of those kids that committed suicide. All of those that were shot. All of those that did not live to see the flower of their days. Isaiah 25 verse 10 says, On that day you will hear the voice of the Lord say, Awake! Awake! You who sleep in the dust. You see, he said part of the plan of the new city is that there will be no more death. He said, I have a better word awake. I have a better word prepared for you. Come ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Great controversy 640 to 646. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The whole earth will ring with glad tidings. Are you there with me? The graves will break open. Can you see that? Praising homes uh, will break open. Nursing homes, uh, assisted living facilities, the ocean, the rivers, uh, the, the, the fire, the mountains, everywhere where there had been life, we hear the voice of Jesus. I love what the Bible says. The Bible says in Isaiah 35, 33 verse 24, the Bible says that the Bible says, and the inhabitants will no longer say, I'm sick. Uh, somebody should be praising the Lord right now. I'm talking about a better world. Isaiah 33 verse 24 says, And the inhabitants will no longer say, I'm sick. In other words, no more cancer. Uh, you're not listening to the preacher. In other words, no more allergies. Come on, talk to me. In other words, no more heart attack. Are you there with me? In other words, no more high blood pressure. Are you there with a the preacher? In other words, no more COVID. Are you there? In other words, no more loop pressure. No more pain. Are you there with me? No more diabetes. Are you there with me? And the inhabitants will never say, I'm sick. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Verse 5 says, and there will be no more cute eyeglasses. Come on, talk to me. You're not listening to the preacher. Hallelujah. No more need for contact lenses. Oh, hallelujah. To God be the glory. Are you there with me? The Bible says, cause the blind will see again. All of you, that's the new city. The blind will see again. You don't need laser surgery because the blind will see again. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. And Brian, there will be no need for hearing aid. You're not listening to the preacher. No need. A better world. Uh, some of you are not listening to the preacher. No need for hearing it. Why? Because the Bible says that, that God has done something very beautiful. The Bible says 
that he will repair their hearing. What do you say to that? Verse 6 says, and the lame shall leap as a deer. Come on, talk to me. I'm talking about Isaiah 33, uh, 35, verse 6. It says the lame, uh, those that have been sitting in wheelchair, those that have to walk with crutches, uh, on that day, uh, they're going to be leaping. Come on, talk to me. To God be the glory uh, of great things that he have done. Are you there with me? Oh, oh, oh they're going to be singing all the way. Uh, my Savior led me. Uh, what can I ask beside? Uh, they're going to sing faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Hallelujah! No need for wishes. The tongue. The tongue of the dumb. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. I have a cousin of mine. When we had worship, and in the middle of the worship, when the sun got interested, because she couldn't talk, she could hear. As the sun got interested, all she did was to stomp her feet. And as she stung her feet, she began to bang on the table. She wanted to say something, but she can't say it. But friends of mine, the new world promised something else. On that day, the Bible says that the redeem of the Lord will come with everlasting joy. The redeem of the Lord will come with everlasting singing. Can you hear them? Can you hear them singing? Oh, 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 hear the power of Jesus. Name. Can you hear them singing right on oh, King Jesus? Uh, and no man can hinder thee. Uh, can you hear them singing Jesus did it all? Uh, you see, they love to sing the song of redemption. Uh, on that day, uh, their tongues are loose. Uh, because the doctor of glory uh, has stepped in. Are you there with me? Uh, and all they can do uh, is to sing hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. Verse 10 says, And the redeemed. And the redeem of the Lord. And the redeem of the Lord will come to Zion. With singing. Are you not hearing the preacher? They will come with everlasting joy. Think about the joy that never ends. The redeem of the Lord will come to Zion with singing the timeless theme earth and heaven will pass away it's not a dream friends of mine God will make all things new that day friends of mine gone are you there with me Go on, friends of mine, you're not hearing the preacher. Friends of mine, I want you to understand there will be no pain, there will be no crying, there will be no sickness, there will be no loneliness, there will be no depression, there will be no sadness, there will be everlasting joy. The Bible says the redeemed of the Lord will have everlasting joy. What a day that will be. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. The Bible says they shall obtain joy and gladness and singing. Friends of mine and signing shall flee away.
never cry again. Praises to the grave I am. We will live in the light of the risen. First of all, think about it. Think about it. When you hear the news, when you read the news, your heart aches. Think about it. In our very neighborhood, Jesus saw these things years ago and said, I put a plan in place. First of all, that's why it pays to serve God. First of all, you've come too far to turn away. You've been here too long to walk away now. Brother Maya, I want to say to us that God have a perfect plan, a better world. Yesterday I drove by the cemetery, my heart broke. But God have a better plan. A plan that says that death itself shall die. A plan that says that this mortal will put on immortality. He have a better plan. A plan that says that death will be swallowed up in his victory. He have a better plan. A plan that said that Christ will come again. Do you want to see him? Do you want to see him? If you want to see him, stay on your feet and give him a hand of praise. You want to see him, just give him a hand of praise. A better world. Jesus knowing all that's going on because he is the Alpha and Omega. Are you listening to me? It is not strange to him. Whatever you're going through, he's seen it already. Knowing all of that, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. Knowing all that you're facing. He said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. That's what Jesus said. He said, it's just a matter of time. Where we'll study war no more. Hallelujah. He said, it's just a matter of time. That we will not have to worry. As to how we're going to retire. He says, it's just a matter of time. When we send our kids out, we won't have to be worried as to what's going to happen to them. He says, it's just a matter of time. Can you see him? Can you see him? government of the United States and other worlds are trying, the world leaders are trying to figure out if there is another world out there. Because there are strange things happening. They're saying we are seeing some strange spot and sighting and, and, and we think there are other beings out there.
Friends of mine, what I'm about to say is that Christ is about to come. That's why the Milky Way is getting wider and wider. Come on, talk to me. Orion Belt is open a little wider. Are you there with me? In other words, it's making room for the king that will come soon. Pretty soon. The father and the son and the Holy Ghost will lean in one accord. Jesus will be top on the shoulder. Son. Son. It's about time. You go down to planet earth. And get my people. Hallelujah. The construction is done. The mansions are ready. There is no need for corn air. There is no need for electricity. There is no need for the SUN. You, Jesus, you are the light of the city. It's time you go to planet earth. And then he, the Bible says, for the very first time, now listen to this now, for the very first time, heaven is empty without any angel. Are you quiet on the preacher? For the very first time, heaven is empty. In other words, I believe that God himself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, all three in one accord, and we're going down. It's time to call our children home to a better world. And then they come down so quickly, they will not touch planet Earth. Stay through our atmosphere and call out. And the voice of Jesus is so powerful that every grave begins to break open. Every ocean begins to give way. Every mountain begins to break loose. Every rock begins to fall out of place. And then you hear his voice. Come ye blessed of my father inherit. The kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Are you there with me? And those that are alive will be caught up with those in the air. Are you there with me? And as we are going there, yeah, as God and angels, some angels went back quickly and to open the pearly gates. Uh, then we hear them saying, lift up your heads. Uh, all ye gates. Uh, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting door. Because a king of glory shall come in. Are you there with me? My Ella Lewis, who is the king of glory? He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Who is the king of glory? He is the fourth man in life's fire and furnace. Who is the king of glory? He is king of kings and lord of lords. Who is the king of glory? He is the way where there was no way. Who is the king of glory? He is the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Who is the king of glory? Lift up your hands, all ye guests, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, because the king of glory. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. Heads are bowed. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. Oh. To 
saying to me and pastor I've heard the word of God I heard that the redeem of the Lord will come with everlasting joy you're saying God I, I, pastor I just want to surrender all to God I want to give my life over to him because only those that are redeemed will sing everlasting songs when the doors that are redeemed will sing a redeem, re redemption song. Come on, talk to me. One of the redeemed. And you're saying, Pastor, I, I want to be among the redeemed. If that is your prayer today, why don't you raise your hand quickly? I want to see you want to be among the redeemed. God bless you. You're online. You're watching from wherever you are. You want to be among the redeemed. Just raise your hand. All of us should have our hands raised. We want to be among the redeemed. My father called. My father called. You've not committed to following God all the way. And you're saying, I want to commit to follow God all the way. Even into baptism. I, I, I want Bible study. I want baptism. I want to give my life over to God. For God loved this world so much. He did not speak it. He did it. He came. You say, Lord, I want my life, my life to be changed. I want my name written in the Lamb's book of life. You're here, you're watching online, wherever you're watching from, you want to make this commitment. Why don't you just raise your hand quickly? Type your name in the chat, wherever you are. Just write your name quickly. We want to, I want to send someone, just write, raise your hand, write your name in the chat. We will call you, we will pray with you. You are here quickly now, just raise your hand. I want to pray up on the balcony and down here. Wherever you are, just raise your hand. You're saying, Lord, Pastor, I want to be, I want to give my life to God completely. In fact, I want to follow God even into the watery grave. Do not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed. Nobody have a heaven to send you to. Are you here? Just raise your hand quickly now. We want to pray quickly. Father, I surrender all to you. We surrender all to you. And we want to thank you for a better world you have in place. A better system you've put in place. A place where there would be no class system. A place where there would be no separate neighborhood. A place where the lamb and the lion, the little child will lead them a place where the walls will be called praise. The place where Sani will no longer be heard in this wall. A place where Jesus himself will be there. Father, we want to thank you. Thank 
you for a better world. He says, son, let my people know that I go to prepare a place for them. And if I go and prepare a place for you, let them know that I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Father, if today is our last day, may we be assured that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So we want to thank you in advance. Bless us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. I say in the mighty name of Jesus. In the awesome name of Jesus. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Wherever you are, give the Lord a hand of praise. 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 As the praise teams are coming, the praise team will be coming up. Our prayer coordinator, are you coming up, please? Let us stand up, please. We're going to have our evangelistic prayer. Um, church, let us stand up together. We're going to have our evangelistic prayer. Our, our, our elders are coming to pray for us. We're going to have our evangelistic. Let's all stand. We are praying for our souls this year. Let us all stand uh, as we get ready for that. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you as the church, Sharon Seventh-day Adventist Church on Vernon, New York. Father, you see the plan that you have placed before us to seek for souls. You have kept us this far to seek for souls, oh God. Father, as we plan, as we are getting ready for this evangelistic series, we pray, Almighty God, that your Holy Spirit will continue to empower us in Jesus' name. We pray that as a church, you will keep us together in unity, O oh God. We pray that all our plans will be fruitful according to your will, O oh God. Father, be with us in Jesus' name. Eternal God and our Father, we just want to thank you so much for this plan that we have laid to go out in this community gather souls for your kingdom. God, we only can plan and do your, our part. But we are asking you to send your guiding angels, Lord, to prepare the field for us. Send your holy angels, Father God, and your Holy Spirit to deal with these individuals who will, we will go to witness to. Give them receptive heart. Give them an acceptance, Lord, no is a time in which persons are asked to surrender not only some of their lives, Lord, but all of their family to you. We set a goal of 50, but Lord, we're asking you if you can double it to 100. Let people come from the east, west, north, and south come right at this place to worship you. Oh God, bless us, bless the evangelists, and bless us as a people that we will have receptive heart and love in our heart to receive these new members in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Amen. We want to thank pastor for the word that we just heard amen i'm sorry did we just hear a word we want to thank pastor for the word that we just heard amen all right so we're going to sing one more song if you like it clap with us worship with us amen Let's do it.